I'm a chemist and I also am interested in other things. A few years ago, I saw an exhibition of images of the nano world. Here are two of them, very typical of what you have seen. At left is the gold tip of a scanning tunneling microscope. At right, a diffraction pattern in false colors from a silicon crystal. These are images. They convey information to the scientists studying. For instance, I didn't know that the tip was so rough. I thought of it as being very smooth. But they also have some significance as images. And that is what I want to explore with you. The moment I saw those images, in fact, I thought of a movie I had seen when I was younger called Blow Up by Michelangelo Antonioni. And that was that movie was of a photographer who was otherworldly in various ways. He took some images in the garden of a man and a woman, and when he blew them up in his studio and kept blowing them up, he saw not only the man and the woman, but also what looked to be a trace of a murder. How real was that, what he saw, as a result of blowing up the image? That's very interesting. How real are the images that you see? Some of them look quite real. Uh, for instance, the image at upper left looks just like a man on Neapolitan that's a little chocolate wafer that I like made in Austria uh, that uh, I recently crunched into. Uh, the one uh, next to it uh, in black and white and also the one below, they look a little bit science fiction like otherworldly. I'll come back to that. Uh, they, they look a little bit not quite real. But what is real? I want to show you some apples and fruit made by Paul Cezanne. The paintings at the Metropolitan, the fruit at the middle at the top is probably a persimmon. Uh, there are no black circles around real apples. These apples, which are more real than real, are representations as much as the scientific images that you see, which are of electrons passing through some sort of object and then impacting and giving a signal, these are all representations of reality. What's interesting about to me about them is that the scientists who show these to you, to me, are making artistic choices. They don't think they are, but they are during in the process of showing them. So, for instance, here is a bunch of nano dots. Now, the scientists could have chosen them to you, uh, could have chosen to show them to you in a square array shot head on, like a bunch of soldiers marching. But how much more interesting is what he did, thinking simply artistically about the form of the presentation, that it's at an angle, that it's cut off. All of this makes this much more interesting and therefore draws you in to examine it closely for the scientific content that's in it. The choices that are made are subtle sometimes. At left are some tin oxide nanowires. The thickest of these is thinner than a hair. They are in focus, they are out of focus, they are darker or lighter. The choices that are being made in this presentation are not that different from the choices in a classical Chinese painting, such as you would see on the fifth floor of our Johnson Museum. There is one of these paintings at right with a woodcutter in front, and there is a middle ground of a stairway leading up, and then there is a background of those wonderful mountains in Guilin province in China, which are real. These are artistic choices that are being made. One interesting question one could ask is, of these images, of these types of images, which will persist a hundred years 
from now, which will enter the vocabulary of artistic representations of the future. I think these images, which look otherworldly, in some way unreal, are more likely to do that than the straight on realistic images that you see, just because they we don't know quite what to make them, and that's what makes that what makes it interesting. I want to end with this image here. It's nothing complicated. It's a it's a glass surface that's been bombarded with argon ions to clean it up. Maybe it's multiplied a hundred thousand times. But when I see this image, I think of sand dunes. I think of the recent filming of Frank Herbert's novel Dune by Villeneuve, uh, a, a beautiful film. And I think of sand dunes I have seen in the Sahel. I, I think of every other image of dunes that come to mind. And I also think of that glass. I bring together the art and the science and this is what I like.